This is One on One. Here they are, Len Berman and Todd Snit. Did I get that right? Well, uh, Todd Schnitt. Schnitt. Todd Schnitt, all right. Schnitt. Co-host of yeah. uh, Len Berman and Todd Schnitt in the morning. Uh, New York 710 WOR. By the way, what time is this? Uh, what time? Six? Six to 10 a.m. Yeah, four, yeah, four yeah. hours together. Yeah, it's six like, yeah. to 10 a.m. What's the chemistry Which like, Which is Len? three hours and 59 minutes too much. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's very interesting, but as you know what they say, if two guys sit around and agree all the time, then one of them isn't necessary. You don't so agree on much? Uh, you uh, know. Some things. He doesn't like golf. I don't like guns. Yeah. There, you go. <laughs> there it is. I spent 22 years in Florida, so we, we've got a couple of But he's a big sports guy, yeah. and you love sports? Uh, you know, I, I like certain aspects of sports, but I'm not a, a sports-crazed maniac. But listen, He's I, not either. Uh, I grew up in New York. I've been going to Mets games since I was a little kid. Family's from Flushing, so plenty of exposure. Not a Yankee fan? Uh, you know, listen, I went to my share of Yankees games. The family was split, but I ended up at Shea more than I did at Yankee Stadium. By the way, I am really not a sports fanatic, and I think that's one of the reasons we're doing this show. This is not a sports show. It's general news, water cooler kind of show. And I don't think I was ever a fanatic. I, as, a, as a kid, I loved Mickey Mantle and the Yankees. Same here. Right. So I was, that was my fanaticism. But Mickey doesn't play for them anymore, and uh, I wasn't as crazy about the other sports. And I just always, and I, as I told Tata, I would read the newspaper from the front to the back. I wasn't one of these guys who was, like, buried in statistics. Not your thing. Yeah. Well, folks think of Len Berman, you know, decades at Channel 4 doing sports, that he must be a, a sports expert. But, you know, but, but um, and you know, you know plenty about sports. But what's amazing for Len is Len gets to now branch out and do material sure. that he never had a chance to do. And, you know, it's interesting. You, quote, unquote, stepped aside from the television side how many years ago? Right. Uh, six now. What brought you back? Well, my wife said, get out of the house already. <laughs> That'll do it. Well, I really give a lot of credit to our boss, Tom Cuddy, and I'm just saying yeah. this to blow smoke. Uh, he's the one who decided that, gee, Len, do you want to try a general talk show as opposed to just sports? And he had watched me in Boston 100 years ago when I was a sportscaster there, and he had watched me on Live at 5 and the 6 and the 11 in New York. And he j just guessed, I had never met him, from the pitter-patter, or mm. the patter, whatever you call it, uh, that I could talk about other things besides just sports. So I really give him the credit for that. And he brought me in, gave me a couple of auditions. This went on for a long time. And they finally had me audition with uh, Todd. And, uh, and it, they say, that, you know, I say this sincerely. They tell us the chemistry is great. I don't know. I've heard I you guys. Tell. It, I can't it tell. does work. I, I think the terminology they used was we were the least sucky or audition. <laughs> least crappy. Least really. crappy audition. Least cra <laughs> but yeah, so. by the way, in the mornings, there had been some challenges, let's yeah, just say. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the station wanted to turn that around right. and help the brand. And so you guys are the answer for now. And here's the, well, I, I shouldn't say for now. I shouldn't well, say for now. You guys are weeks. the, you guys, they decided on. I hope we're still on when the show airs. No, I'm sure we'll be. Here's the thing that's fascinating. You have, you're pretty conservative politically. Politically, yes. And does that, you're, how do you describe yourself I don't. I'm not a label guy, and that's where we get in these huge fights, because uh, Todd is certainly more conservative than I am. I'm going to give us an example. He calls me New York liberal. <laughs> okay. But I don't okay. Al Sharpton is on the other end. Okay. Right. Al Sharpton led into this. Sure. Sharpton, you a fan? Uh, no. And I want him to pay his taxes. What? <laughs> Come on, seriously. That's where you go right away with Sharpton. Right. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm not a Sharpton fan. I think he's an agitator. I think he's an instigator. And I can't believe he has the kind of access You're Obama fan? to uh, 60. Uh, no, no, I'm not, not an Obama You're fan. You're answering for him? But, but it comes he's not down, a, oh, I've been listening but, to this for it, five it, months it now. It comes down I mean. to policy. If I agreed with Obama's policies, which I don't, then I'd be more of a fan. I'm just, I'm just not. You're going to ask me about Sharpton? I've said this on the air. I w I'm Jewish. I wish Jewish people had an Al Sharpton. I, I, I once had a major controversy with Don Imus on the radio when I thought he I was anti-Semitic, and I said so on the air, and I didn't have a Jewish representative to have my back. So I said, oftentimes, I wish there was a Jewish Al Sharpton. Now, do I agree with everything he does? I, you know, it's obviously fairly biased. You know, he doesn't stand up when he blacks... He has a point of view. Well, he has a point of view. He's very obviously an advocate for blacks. Uh, but, but let me ask you something, because you've never been identified as someone who's, quote-unquote, overly political. Right. Do you enjoy talking politics? No. I don't enjoy the label game. I just think it's one step above schoolyard. I thought in the, in the schoolyard, you would say, am so, am not, fat so, four eyes, ethnic slurs. 
And it, I always felt that kids would do that because they weren't intelligent enough to have a conversation. Now I think this political thing is one step above. You're a conservative. You're a liberal. You're a red stater. You follow Fox. You don't, but you're on the radio, and labels are a part but of I the know. game, but right? I, I think it's important to realize that our show is not a political show. Do we deal with politics? Topical. We're, we're very topical, topical yes. Yeah. But the first thing that we want to achieve every morning, we're an entertaining, informative show. We want to entertain. Do politics creep in? If there's a huge political story, something the president has done, if there's a big policy decision, uh, a big New York state politics story, is there a de Blasio story? Yes, we're talking about that. But the bulk of our show is not about politics. And in the talk radio format, there's been a lot of format fatigue because of the partisan politics. And, and if you're not, excuse me for interrupting, yeah. if you're not entertaining, you're not keeping them there, and you're not doing your job. Well, it was presented to me as a water cooler show. So what are people talking about on any given day? And it could be the upstate uh, prison escape. It could be yeah. a machete attack in Bryant Park. You know, so there's all kinds of things that are happening that people are just talking about. Todd came up with this great story the other day that was just phenomenal. A guy was suing, and he won his suit because he went in for a colonoscopy in Virginia, and he secretly recorded by accident all the doctors saying negative things about him. Get out of here. Yeah. And it's an amazing story. story. It was uh, Washington Post, actually. So uh, out of Vienna, Virginia, the guy goes in for a standard colonoscopy. He had rolled the recorder on his smartphone during the pre-op instructions to find out what he should do afterward. He forgot to turn it off. His phone was recording during the entire procedure, and they were making well, just fun of horrific things, saying he had, uh, what, syphilis in and his genitalia, that he e had e tuberculosis. What did they say, Ebola, Ebola of the penis? I mean, They're was, saying these things about him. Yeah. And, and, they call, and, and, and how did you wind up using it on the air? Because well, we, the audio surfaced in the court suit. And talk, the guy yeah. won. He won a half a yeah. million dollars. Talk about the story. It's defamation. Played, played did people the audio. want DMP taking calls? People are calling, talking about it? We didn't take calls on that segment, but that would have been a good... Yeah. That, you know, Steve should have... We ought to hire him as a producer. A producer, come show. on. Yeah, uh, I've, I've that was a good idea. Morning radio. Natalie, I get the whole Natalie idea does a great job. An That's so a good idea. You have a great team. You really do. I'm going to ask you something. How much is... It goes to that question. How much is scripted? How much is, hey, we're just feeling this right now? Oh, there's nothing that's scripted. No, sure. Sure. Four hours, nothing scripted. Nothing written. No, nothing. We know. You walk in a quarter of this, or whatever time you walk in. Uh, 4 30, much? that would be 4 30. I wish I could. No walk way. In a quarter no of way. You're not walking in 4 30. I walk in at 4 30. Todd sleeps in 15 minutes because he's up all night preparing. <laughs> uh, I'm up until 11 30 prepping, so yeah. I'm, not, I'm not getting much sleep these days. So we have piles of information right. and stories, and, and he has piles upon piles. So you're walking in, and you got all this stuff. Right. You decide. Yeah. We, we, you we produce one of the big stories, and we said, what do you yeah. want to talk about? And and then Todd decides what he wants yeah, to talk listen, about. I, I walk in every morning with Lynn. We talk about really the, the top right. three, top four, top five big items that we have. And then I have all the ancillary, the, the A-list, the B-list, the C-list, the morons in the news stories. And I kind of have an idea of what's big, what's going to carry the show. But it's pretty much spontaneous. It's kind of controlled spontaneity. By Just the way, what's really funny is yeah. when you come up with, he'll come up with a, a parody song that I don't even remember. Like the other day, uh, he, he said, Bomberan. I said, no, no. No, no, the name of the song is Barbara Ann. Barbara Ann. Yeah. But he, there was a parody that was hugely successful yeah. during the See? Iran hostage crisis called Bomb, 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 you That's what it is. I feel. I feel it's the public yeah, sure. television. We feel these things. Is it yeah. going to work? I don't know. It's, We've been it's, five it's, months. Look, bottom line is we're doing five months. We're doing so. a few radio, seconds left. We're doing a radio show on seven ten W O R radio that has not been done in New York for a very long time. Listen, everybody. We're at time again. Six to ten a.m. Monday guys, through Friday. Check it out, guys. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us. You guys have something going here. It's well, a nice marriage. So. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. This special edition of One on One with Steve Adubato is brought to you from the Tisch WNET studios at Lincoln Center. Funding has been provided by Wells Fargo, the New Jersey Education Association, NJIT, Barnabas Health, MagnaCare, New Jersey Sharing Network, and by the Mental Health Association in New Jersey. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.